The main question to start off with is what have we learned about the target that presents some sort of opportunity? Now, I, I keep this group kind of broad because depending on the category you work in, you might have a tension or a problem. You might not. You might have an insight or desire. Um, there's really a range of things that can go in this box. But I think that question is the thing that ties them together. So again, what's the opportunity? What have we learned about the target that presents some sort of opportunity for us? So some things to consider. Are there any challenges that stand in the way of them reaching their goals? This obviously requires some sort of knowledge about them, some sort of research that you've done in understanding what their motivations and goals are. And then from there thinking, well, what's in their way, what stands in their way or what limits them from achieving that? And it can be functional or emotional. Another way in would be educational insights. Uh, these are common in some categories. We'll actually look at a couple today, but is there an educational insight that might open a consumer's mind to our product or service? So once they learn about this, thing that we're going to educate them? Um, is it going to make them maybe rethink or reconsider or be open to our product? I, again, I like fill in the blanks, um, but I, you want to answer the question, why would they care about the benefit we provide? So why would they even care in the first place about our product? And so you could do a fill in the blank. They, they would care about the benefit we provide because fill in answer. That's another way in. Some best practices. Don't make it about the brand or the product. It's really common in the insight box to get into a trap of um, writing an insight that's more business centric as opposed to something that's more human or about what's happening in the consumer's life. Um, you wanna use your research. Ideally, you've done some research. Some, sometimes, uh, you know, if you don't have huge budgets, maybe not, but ideally you've heard directly from the consumer at some point and you're using that learning to inform what you're doing. And observations count too. So a lot of times research is done and it's more answer. Uh, it's like, I ask you a question, you give me an answer. I give you a survey, you give me an answer. But if you can get anything observational, that usually leads to more powerful insights and things that might be even hidden to people that they wouldn't articulate back to you, but that you can observe that they're doing. Watch outs, things to look out for, um, or problems that people often run into here. Uh, one is making it about you. I kind of mentioned this a little bit, but uh, insights, the, the they don't have our product insight. We'll actually look at an example in a minute of, of this, but them not having your product or service today is not an insight and it's not the problem. You want to get at something else. Citing more than one problem. The, the problem with citing multiple problems, multiple insights, is then it takes you to multiple benefits, multiple responses for that insight. And it leads to work that isn't really single-minded and that might have too many takeaways or conflicting takeaways. So it's a little bit of a watch out. Usually you wanna kind of hone in on one, one primary insight that you're working with. Um, and then you don't wanna solve for the same thing the competitive set solves for if you can avoid it, um, unless you can solve for it in a meaningfully better and different way that's superior, um, that could work. But oftentimes you want to try to find insights that are maybe a little bit more unique to be solving for that are more of a white space. Okay, so some examples. <clears throat> Not so good insight. Potential customers' taxes could be done much more accurately if they used our tax, tax preparation and filing services. So this is an example of the, they don't have our product or service, and therefore that's the insight of the problem. Um, they don't have our tax software, otherwise, their their tax their taxes are being done wrong because they don't have our tax software like that's not really a great insight um, instead a better example would be something like most americans unknowingly make mistakes on their taxes leaving behind over a billion dollars in unclaimed refunds each year now this has a little bit of a stat in it it doesn't have to have that um, but the fact that americans are unknowingly making mistakes resulting in lost money they don't even know about <clears throat> that would be a relevant insight. And that's much better than saying customers' taxes could be more accurate if they used our accuracy tax filing software, right? All right, so we wanna do some reverse engineering, what we think the insight might be behind these ads. And again, I'll remind you the key question is why, why would this matter to someone? If you can answer that question, you're probably, you've probably landed on the insight. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you is actually a series of um, three different, 
I, th I believe these were print ads, three different print ads, and these are from Dove, Real Beauty, um, and they're all part of the same campaign. So here's ad number one. Ad number two. And then ad number three. So the insight, the same insight behind all three of these, I'll show them to you again. One, two, three. What do we think? Why does any of this matter? Like what's important? What are they trying to, you can also work your way backwards. What are they trying to tell you? Like you don't have to be or have like a picture perfect life, body, clothing, like you're beautiful, however you have to show up in the world. Right. So this is, this is real life. I mean, it's in the headline there, real life, real it's real life. So we're showing you real life, but there's actually something I think they're also telling you these things are beautiful, right? Real life, real beauty. So I think if you work your way backwards from there, you get to something like real life is, because this is important because real life is messy, right? And it's kind of those messy imperfections in your life that actually make it interesting or beautiful. Some, it would be something along those lines and they probably have research around that, right? That like. It's the imperfections in your life that make it interesting and worth living. That's sort of like a fundamental human insight. Um, and so now they're just, they're going from beauty outwards to life context, but it's sort of the same point, right? And as far as beauty goes, it's your, your imperfections that make you unique and beautiful. It's the imperfections in your life that make life beautiful. So that would be the, the insight. That was probably a hard one to start with, I admit. Um, let me give you one that, Let's do another print ad here. This is for Airbnb. And for those who don't know that, I think that's supposed to be a Polaroid frame photo. I feel like they want you, they've said live instead of stay. So they want you to feel comfortable where you are, no matter if it's just for a night, like that's your home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so live live there even if it's just for a night. I think one one thing that helps here if you is if you consider their competitive context. Like Airbnb, they actually have competition. Anybody care to guess who their main competition is? Hotels. Hotels? Exactly. It's hotels. And when you think of when people typically stay in hotels, they're gonna go stay at a Marriott or a Hilton or whatever. These are common hotel brands. And anywhere you go in the world, for the most part, different countries, different locations, the hotels are the same. It's actually part of the hotel like selling point. Every time you go to a Marriott, you know what you're gonna get. But if you go to Italy and you stay in a Marriott, have you actually been to Italy? Have you actually seen Italy? You know, you're, you're not really there. You're just in another Marriott. And so they're kind of, I think they're pushing against that insight of like, hey, if you go on vacation, you should actually feel like you were there, live among the locals kind of thing, feel like you actually live there, even if just for a night. So I think the insight is probably um, something around, you know, typical hotel experiences are all the same. In fact, when you go on vacation, it's like you were never there at all. You know, like that's probably the space that that insight comes from. So we're back to the case study. Try to come up with, I put here at least two options. Don't worry about that. Just come up with one option you like for insight. 